the only game I purchased at Origins is going to be Dice Miner. Now, uh, earlier, uh, Chelsea was here, and she, she knows the story of how I picked this up now because I was helping with Greenbrier doing demos. I was not actually in the booth. I was off in a demo area, and Atlas Games actually had their booth or a demo section at Caddy Corner to where I was, but also selling games at it uh, with a little setup. And we had talked to them. They didn't have Dice Miner, at least when we talked to them about reviews and stuff. And then last day, within like the last hour of the con, I just happened to glance over at their booth. And I see one copy of this sitting out in front of other games because I had tiered, tiered all these other games. And this was just kind of sitting by itself in front of it all. I was like, wait, they have a copy. Like, with, within 30 seconds, I was standing in front of it like, I didn't even think. Like, I was just there looking at the game. And I just asked, I was like, is this for sale? Because, like, they didn't have it. I know Gen Con, they sold out online. They've been selling out. And they were just like, yeah. I was like, okay, sold. Like, I didn't even ask the price. I was like, I'm buying it because I'd, I'd been wanting to play it, wanting to grab it. I missed out grabbing it at Gen Con. So I got it. And then he told me, he was like, yeah, we only put it out like 10, 15 minutes ago. It's the only one we've put out the whole con. And it ended up being the dog's copy. I was like, oh, okay. Luck shone upon me that day to pick this up. So I, it, it kind of just said, okay, I have to show it off because I had that chance to grab it. So we're going to look at look at it today. And being deluxe copy, um, uh, we'll get to show off the deluxe upgrade piece of the mountain. And I'm trying to remember what else was considered upgra upgraded, but we'll try to go over that. But just the artwork alone, uh, the way they have this uh, stone dwarven figure, and as you turn the box, he's standing above this dragon head doorway. And just that leads into the box itself. So I haven't cut the, uh, the package yet, but that's actually a flap that's going to open up. So again, this is from Atlas Games. It's a one to four player game. So once I learn how to play, I'll probably end up showing it here uh, on Twitch as well. Uh, it says ages 14 and up. It's a, about 20 to 30 minute game approximately. So a, a nice, fast, uh, fun playtime. That's a easy to show off here on stream, but also to get to the table when you don't want a heavier game, but you still want that table presence. You, you still want uh, a decent amount of components to play with. So they, they call it a one of a kind uh, game of dice drafting, which I've seen online. This tower, the dice are on it and you're pulling pieces from it. So the, so the theme, the talk of rolling dice and drafting them and the components themselves are just too much to want to pass up. So I'm definitely excited to see what's in this game. And the fun part about a flap like that is being able to cut across so, so much easier and open this. I'll show you right now how that flap pops up. So I'm trying to tell if there's magnets in that. Yeah, it feels like there's some very soft magnets in the lid of that. Yeah, I can feel a couple of circular magnets, very soft. So it's not going to be a hard snap. Um, so that opens up flat like that. I'm trying to sh see if I can show off some of this as I the different pieces of art. Uh, so this is the deluxe box. So that back we just showed off was actually a, just a piece of paper advertisement. So now I put it on the shelf and the back is just going to be the name, which is really nice in the way it pops. Okay, so if, see if I could show you under that flap what you would see. So they repeated the art once right here. And then kind of open it and it's almost like the seal around the box because uh, it continued that that wave pattern all the way across Ooh, look at the way that opens it's really nice because that fully opens up flat so the dwarves once lived beneath three mighty mountains after centuries of war they defeated their age-old enemies the dragons Moving to the surface, the dwarves built magnificent cities and won renown for their uh, heartening beer. 
But now, the dragons have returned. I'm just loving the way this whole box opened already. Okay, and so we got our, right on top, Guide to Mining, which is our rule book. Um, game designed by Joshua uh, DeBonis and Nicola Rusteski. I probably mispronounced that. I do apologize. To open it, you have to say melon. <laughs> well, you said it for me. So, there we go. Uh, so we got rule book. Uh, we got different rule book for solo, which is nice to see that up front. Um, you don't have to search through the whole book for that. Uh, I know some people don't want to see it separate. They want to see it right in there. Um, but I do enjoy having been able to set that aside. Of course, a good Lord of the Rings reference is always necessary anytime you pull out a good dwarves game. Um, so let's see what this rule book looks like real quick. So it kind of goes over what the game's about real quick. Um, overview, components, nice and easy to read, good pictorial view, setup. Uh, then it kind of hints at the solo mode, the gameplay, the phases, uh, good little indicators of what's what on the mountain. Uh, it talks about the different dice, and it even shows what's on each dice right here when it talks about them, which is nice. Yep, indeed. Speak, friend, and enter at the gates of Moria. And then it talks about victory right here. Credits. And then play testers and special thanks and such designers. And who, who helped them? Uh, the solo rules, like we talked about, goes over the differences and score and how you would score, and then like comparing your result to how much you scored and what it means. Looks like we got some punch board right on top. Oh, this is nice and thick as well. That's definitely at least a four millimeter punch board as opposed to like the three we saw in the others. Let's see how well it snaps. That was clean sounding. So when it's thicker, you're gonna get more of that pop snap even without tabs. Yeah, exactly, that's a really nice snap. And these are all of the uh, character boards, it looks like, the different characters you can play as. That one almost got caught, but being that it's thicker, it's kind of expected. Let's see. If, so if we, if you look closely, you can kind of see that tab on it, but they're really fine tabs, just because they're so thick. It held more, so you don't have to make it as uh, wide a tab. Oh, and here's our mountain. So, the deluxe uh, version of this game comes with the plastic printed uh, formed mountain instead of a cardboard one that you assemble. Uh, very nicely textured. You can see the grooves where all the dice would sit. Uh, and just, they come in plain gray. It looks very nice. Um, I know people have already posted online that they've been painting these. I've talked to Chelsea and uh, Chuck, who I game with, and Chuck likes to paint miniatures, so I've talked about possibly him helping me get this painted. Yeah, it almost feels like it's mandatory for this game. Uh, it gives it a little bit more presence. The, Of course, the cardboard one has all the different printed colors on it, so it's not just gray, so it's kind of finding that balance of which one you prefer. But, But that is a very nice component edition for the deluxe upgrade and then it has a cup basically a, a dice rolling cup it, uh, oh that is nice it's uh basically it's plastic inside but 
Mm, I don't know if that's actually leather, but it's kind of wrapped and then it has almost etched or pressed into it right there. That, that mug, it's a little hard to show with the lighting. I'm trying to show it off right there, but I think you can see it. So a nice uh, rolling cup for all the dice that we're about to reveal. And oh, we got a nice dice bag in there as well. But everything fits inside, so that's gonna help us with our shake test in a little bit. And then a score pad, which is always appreciated uh, for keeping score, so you don't have to do too much in your head. Uh, enough for up to a four player game, it looks like. Um, have a, it says multiplayer score sheet right there on it. I'm gonna see what the back looks like. Maybe the back, oh yeah, nice. So the back of this is a solo mode score sheet. Instead of saying, instead of going double sided multiplayer on all of them and then doing a separate pad for solo, they've made the back of all these solo. So you can play just as many games solo as you can in multiplayer mode. And so it actually helps you know how much, how, much, how much to multiply your dice as you play this. And it's, oh, I can play six game, solo games on this one page. It's also very nice. So that's the score sheet. So now for dice. First off, of course, you can see the, the printed dice bag, a standard cloth drawstring. Pretty straightforward. But the point that they've screen printed on it is really nice as well. The addition. And then we have bags of dice. Okay, so this calls for a switch of views so we can show off all these dice close up. So, this is one of the key reasons I wanted to get this game is because, like I've talked about, I'm a dice goblin, dice fiend, whatever you want to say. I like my dice. I want my dice. Clickety clack. And this has a lot of them. So any dice or any game that you can roll a lot of dice um, and of course just the look of these dice is so is so nice as well um, I would have to look up and confirm if the standard version of this game if the dice are any different um, I do not know for sure I'd have to look up and verify but they have these of course for, for this copy or uh, have custom icons on the dice. Looks like chests and kind of digging tools and mugs. These are standard sized dice, uh, simple plastic. Uh, so not super weighty, but then again, if you're rolling a lot um, onto a table or in the cup, you don't want them too heavy. It's only when you have a, only a couple that you want super heavy. Heavy dice are better. Or at least I enjoy a heavier dice when it's a cup, only a few that I'm rolling. But when you roll them together, I like these, the light standard dice. Uh, but we got some more custom icons. It looks like meteors of some sort. Um, really not sure what all the symbols are yet, but very nice contrast uh, and etched into it. And even more. No, not not quite translucent. Um, there is a, a, but they are not fully opaque either. It's if you hold it up to the light just right, you can kind of start to see the light shine through it. So a very nice um, cloud-like effect in these dice is is nice to see. And they have a nice feel to them. Um, these first first ones are a bit more slick, um, which is what you would expect with the standard die. But this this material is slightly different, so it's not quite as smooth. That here. Get you a little bit of ASMR dice. Click, clickety clack. Um, again, these 
I'm not sure I'd, I'll be able to hit, get the light to hit right to see partially through these, but if I hold it up, I can see the light, and so they get a lot lighter in color. And this last bag. Uh, back to that other style of dice, uh, almost kind of a stone granite effect on these uh, with, it looks like this number six is the mug. There's quite a few of these. So yeah, that is what is in the copy of Dice Miner right now. Um, so all the scoring is based on the dice you end up drafting, so I don't know the exact rules yet, of course. Um, but essentially, they get rolled um, to some extent and placed onto our mountain in this style where you end up being able to draft them in some way from potentially what's on top or the side of, in some way. I don't know if you're only allowed the top ones or if you can like pull them out uh, this and then they end up dropping down cascading a little bit. Um, so that'll be interesting to learn what the rules are, try it out and then see if I can show it off here on stream. Um, Cause it's a fun effect, uh, especially with the camera like this, you can see both top down and what's on this other edge. It gives you that more 3D effect. As opposed to just dice on the table that a lot of games are where you can only see one edge. So, um, I don't even think I'm going to separate these dice out right now. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep, keep the Ziplocs for now um, if I need to separate everything back out. But all the dice are gonna go into the dice bag. And I'm not sure we need to do a hard shake test on this because we can kind of already tell that uh, all the dice are gonna be in a bag. Of course, the other components are gonna be loose, but they're large components, uh, being the mountain, being the, the dice cup. And I guess my only concern would be the score pad, uh, being all the edges that could catch on the mountain and such. Um, so what I might, I think what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these two Ziplocs, put, put that in the big one. And I'll probably end up at some point getting a pin or something to just stay with the game box. And then all of the, the player boards, which we didn't really fully go look at. Uh, we have a Dragon Slayer, Prospector, Treasurer, alchemist, surveyor, and engineer. They all have different symbols at the bottom, uh, different color coded and different pictures of themselves as well. I'm gonna put those in one of these Ziplocs as well so they don't fly around the box. So at least this is all pieces that already came in the box itself. Um, I could throw this piece of cardboard back in if I wanted to hold the cup and the mountain on top of all these dice and really Keep it from moving but i found this type that if you have to take it out every time to get the rest of the components it's a little unnecessary so i'm probably going to get rid of this piece of cardboard um and then just keep the rest of the stuff in here as is now this is now i know this is probably going to get stored on its side so the score pad does fit on the bottom here which is nice I can do that of course, the dice need to go in here. Um, and our mountain goes in. So it's going to be a little bit looser now because I took that piece of cardboard out. And then we close her up. 